Hi, I'm here today with Nancy Chattero. Um, I'm Kim Kleinman, and I'm interviewing Dr. Chattero today um, in preparation for the IPA conference about the feminine. So um, I'd like to ask you if there's any place that you'd like to start about the meaning of participating in a conference about the feminine for you and your professional path towards having an interest in that area. Well, I would say that to start, I'm completely thrilled that there's a conference, an IPA conference on the feminine, um, on that begins from something about women, really. And of course, the feminine now means more than just women. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly, it comes from a uh, female president of the IPA who's decided to make this front and central. And and to allow us to really explore it in a really open way. Um, because I think that one of the things we're going to find out is that people from the different psychoanalytic centers and communities, and also people from the uh, different societies, I mean, not, I don't mean psychoanalytic societies, I mean the, the sort of global cultures and histories have so many different views of what becomes the feminine. What I would say for myself is that the feminine isn't the word that I myself would necessarily use. I mean, as a global thing about women and gender, and women in particular, it's not gender she's talking about. It's really something about what comes from within women, although men and women might have it. Um, that, that That's really wonderful. Um, my own first and my own connections to um, the feminine, to the psychology of women really come from uh, even before I became a psychoanalyst, but I got really interested in trying to understand mother-daughter relations and what became the reproduction of mothering. And um, that work was done when I was in my not even thirties. I mean, the the book, the dissertation that became the book was finished before my, around my 30th birthday. And it was something about generation and the link so that it wasn't the sort of feminine versus the masculine, but the generation of mother daughter in the, in a, a world where there was so much writing on mothers and sons and so much psychoanalytic writing on the psychology of men Mm -hmm. And that you had to sort of go back to the 20s and 30s to find a psychology of women. Right. And then maybe there were a couple of people in between, um, Judith Kestenberg, mm -hmm. Janine Spesky, Smirgel. Mm -hmm. But really it was the people in the Freudian era. Mm -hmm. So for me, the feminine does have to do with not just the comparison to men or something that's internal and innate, but something about relations with what I'm focused most on was the relations between women mm -hmm. and um and also looking at the taken for granted psychically so women mother was how i started the first book mm -hmm. well everybody knows women mother but can we make that something to look at to think about what are the effects what are the effects on sons what are the effects on daughters how do these women come to be mothers mm -hmm. and so i think that for me the the kind of relatedness of the mother-daughter relationship that leads to what I called women's self in relation in like 74 mm -hmm. was um, very front and central. And then um, the next, so, and then I followed that through, became becoming an analyst and also thinking about, um, you know, the, the individuality of gender and sexuality, which, which, you don't begin thinking about, you begin thinking in terms of generalizations and then you end up thinking very specifically about, wait a minute, each person mm -hmm. is different and how do we get at that? Each person's mm -hmm. funneling or interpretation of this identity that they either choose or know something about culturally and psychically. So that over the time of being an analyst and then rethinking it, I think there's just a lot of components to anything about the feminine and I've talked about or masculine or and I've talked about you know there's a sort of a body component the experience of being in one's own body there's a 
cultural component that's both consciously and unconsciously transmitted from mother to child, mother to daughter, parent to child. Mm -hmm. um, there's the sort of emotional part of it that that doesn't isn't necessarily gendery labeled, but that you know for different people inhabiting femininity, it might be either conflictual or split or paranoid schizoid or very laden with idealizations or very much thought about in terms of I'm not like my mother versus I'm not like men of my generation, if it's a woman thinking about the feminine. Mm. Uh, but, but there are many different components of what this feminine is that's, that come from, you know, the personal identifications of the parents. So that you might, a woman might get her own femininity from her father's unconscious transmissions of his femininity if she comes from a family that has mother and father, mm. as opposed to from the mother. Um, so you, you talk about individual uh, construction of... In the most recent gender book, I talk about, you know, individualizing gender and sexuality. And that, mm -hmm. that I think, I don't want to get away from these very kind of pervasive, if not global, ways of creating the world that most cultures and most people create something that's the feminine and the masculine that's something that comes from that sort of natural observation of most children mm -hmm. um and that does go into i think even those for everybody including those who want to choose to change their gender or change their you know, either biologically or just in identification or in fantasy or who want to be more than one gender, that, that something about those familial identifications are really there and they're both conscious and unconscious. And, you know, mm -hmm. the unconscious we can only explore for every individual. Mm -hmm. um, and do you think that there's a, a, a biological uh, contribution to that construction or is it all psychological? I definitely think there's a biological contribution. I'm just not sure that that it renders, you know, 50% one and 50% the other, or mm -hmm. depending on, you know, gender ratios in different societies where you might choose to keep only the boys. It, you know, there's certainly something in the biology of sexuality, of sexual feelings, of um, self-labeling of um, body part labeling of whole person labeling that partly comes that that you know i don't think you can grow up without it being somehow filtered through whoever the parents are mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean it's one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. um yes i think there's something very rooted in it but then each person has their own fantasy individual meaning of it and then they have their own cultural meaning. Mm -hmm. um, and then what, you know, psychoanalysis is not just about understanding, it's also about the cure or about creating a transformation. So um, can you comment about that at all, about what's curative, let's say about the conference and thinking about the, the feminine? Yeah, well, unfortunately, because I've been trying to do this non-gender thing, I haven't read very much about what's going to be in the conference. I mean, I think that uh, I haven't ever met a patient, I don't know if you have, who isn't thinking about something about their gender and sexuality. Mm -hmm. And it might be sort of front and central, the main thing they're thinking about, or it may be kind of peripheral. I mm -hmm. think it's, it, it, you know, it may be consciously cognized, or you may find that the conscious cognition has very little to do with mm -hmm. the unconscious things that start to emerge about femininity, masculinity, gender, sexuality that then come up, but, but aren't, you know, and I think in different cultures and different time periods, it's more or less front and central. It's become much more front and central than it was mm -hmm. um, in the, uh, maybe the 50s and so when you had so much taken for granted unless you happened to be a deviant in which case you were being you know squelched into giving up your homosexual identification or you know being drawn pictures of how you should actually do the right kind of sex right by your yeah um, yeah 
but you know, um, and I think it's sort of, it, it's more salient for different people, more or less salient. It might not right. be the primary, you know, I think there's something very important about how central is it for the person at hand at the time, mm -hmm. you know, mm. and how central was it developmentally? Yeah. Well, I look forward to hearing you speak at the conference. Well, I'm really looking forward to doing to speaking there as well. And I'm really looking, I feel privileged to be able to be commenting on one of the main plenaries about this as well as to be on another panel. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll, I'll see you in London. Yep. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.